Hello guys, welcome to EZTP Presence Tech View another episode. Um, today I'll show you guys um, one complete database environment. Just it's not just only a database environment, it's SQL Server always on availability group. That means SQL Server high availability environment. How you can create it from the scratch, I'll show you. And also before I start it, I just want to discuss something like what actually you need, why you need the always on high availability. And uh, before you implement what you need, what you need to have. So those things I'm gonna discuss and then I will start with the uh, in implementation. So let's stay with me and then um, I'm going to share my screen and I'll discuss a little bit. All right. So uh, think about SQL Allison environment. That means SQL database. Why you need a SQL database? The first thing is why you need SQL database, right? There, there's a lot of database out there like on the market. So a SQL Server database, uh, Oracle database, MariaDB, um, MongoDB, <clears throat> and a um, lot of database. And SQL Server database and Oracle database is expensive. Both are required license. And there's another database. You don't need to have any license. It's free with some application or some Linux-based appliance. Nowadays, it's free and it's, it's actually um, Okay, so a so, uh, lot of the application, they have that uh, SQL, Postgres SQL. So in that case, you don't need to have any license. You don't need to be worried about it. But a lot of the third-party tools, that means third-party vendor tools, say, for example, monitoring tools, SolarWind monitoring tools, or any other monitoring tools, backup, Beam backup and replication, or net backup, Paytas net backup, whatever the system, that kind of application. If you want to implement, you have to have a database, and the back and the backend you have to have a database. So you have to connect your application with the database. So now we are not talking about the application. How you gonna ensure application high availability? We are not talking about that. We are talking about like say for example, your organization is using. 50 types of application and 50 types of application required to have database. So that means you're going to implement 50, 50 SQL Server um, instance for 50 application, individual 50 machine. No, you don't need to. So if you have at least minimum two server with two SQL instance, you can create, you can create it uh, always on high availability and then all 50 applications, whenever you want to install, you can um, you, you can uh, uh, create a, that application database on this environment. So two instance, two Windows Server, two SQL instance is an, more than enough. And also with these two instance, you will be able to create SQL Server Allison Availability Group, which is SQL Server High Availability with Windows cluster. So nowadays, nowadays, like more than 95%, more than 95% company, they're using SQL Server Allison because it's flexible, manageable, and zero downtime, always on. That means what? All the time is on. So if, your application required to have that kind of SQL. So I think you guys can follow this instruction. But in the screen, I have four instance, I mean four node. Why I have four node? So if you want to create, if you want to create a SQL Allison availability environment, your minimum requirement is you have to have two nodes. Right and maximum eight node you can do, but in my today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys with four node. Very rare you're gonna see with four node, but anyway the reason I'm showing because it's just your thinking. If your company said okay 
money is not a matter for us. We want high availability and also we want multiple types of redundancy. In that case, you can follow this model. And if you think you have a Virginia and like some other remote site location, so if you two node look two node in that case, just deploy one node in your one data center, second secondary node, you deploy on the your remote side. But in my case, I deployed everything is in uh, just two nodes in Virginia data center and two nodes in New York. I'm I'm located in Virginia, so this is my primary site, and this is my remote side. So remote side, I have two uh, Windows server machine because it's if you want to install SQL server, you have to have a Windows operating system first, and then you install SQL. So to create to create SQL always on environment, there is some requirements. Some requirement means you have to have Windows operating system. That's the first requirement. And then your Windows operating system must be minimum Windows 2012 R2. But anyway, Windows 2012 R2 is going to be end of life very soon. So it's not mean that in here, I'm showing here Windows Server 2019 and SQL 2019. It's not mean that you have to have both Windows version and SQL version, both should be same. No, it's not mean that. You can have Windows 2012 R2 as a Windows and SQL, you can have Windows 2019 or 2016 or 2022, whatever you want. It's up to you. But the only thing you have to remember, if you install SQL 2019 in one box, to create a SQL Server all on, you have to have all nodes. If it is two nodes, then all both nodes should be 2019 SQL Enterprise Edition. If it is four node, then of course all four nodes should be the same version. But Windows, you can have different different versions. That's not an issue. But in my demonstration, I'm doing the same Windows version and same SQL. Again, I'm saying don't worry about it because it's not mandatory. You have to have Windows version and SQL version same. It's not mandatory. It's up to you. All right, so. When you're going to create, there is another requirement. So you have to have everything handy. You need some IP address, some submit. So it's going to be, so Virginia, definitely Virginia, you have a network. New York, you have a network. So Virginia network should be different subnet. New York should be another different subnet, right? So two different subnet. That means you are doing, I'm going to show you multi subnet clustering high availability, multi subnet. That means because two different subnet, right? That's why it's called multi subnet. So how many IPs you need? So you need an IP address for all four machines. That means four IPs, right? Individually, one for Windows machine you need one IP. For this machine you need one IP. For this machine you need one IP. So how many IPs? Based on my demonstration, four four IPs, right? And then you have to create. Oh, one more important things. So whenever you gonna do install and you can install the SQL Server. Please don't forget to create a SQL service account. So you have to have a SQL service account and you have to install your um, always on environment, sorry, a SQL server installation. When you do, that, I'll show you. You have to use SQL um, authentication. You cannot use, you cannot use what? You cannot use um, Windows NT authentication. If you do the Windows NT authentication, you cannot do the always on um, like it's it's gonna be a lot of issues. So just remember use service account, and then you have to create you have to create a Windows Server failover cluster. That means Windows level you have to create a cluster. So we're gonna see practically. So after you done with this Windows failover cluster, and you have to configure. Uh, SQL Server Alloism, Alloism. Um, we have to enable then some configuration I'll show you and then whenever everything is done, then create a Alloism availability group. So under one um, Alloism environment, you can have multiple um, availability group and under one, one availability group, you can have multiple database. So you can create a multiple always on availability group, right? 
and you can have a multiple databases, right? So if you have a 50 application, all 50 applications you can host on here. So you don't need 50 Windows box, you don't need 50 SQL instance, right? And also you have a zero downtime, high, high, highly available in modern. And also you have to, so for Windows clustering, you need another two IP address, one IP from your primary site, another IP from the remote site, which is called Windows Server Fillable Cluster. And then finally, at the end, you have to create SQL Server Listener. SQL other than listener, you have to create a listener. So listener is a very, very important thing. So you have to send another two IP address from both sides for listener. So whenever you're gonna install, say for example, um, just giving you an example. So say for example, I'm creating a Beam Backup and I'm installing Beam Backup and application here, right? So edit, they say Beam Backup, Beam Backup. Beam Backup software, I'm gonna install. Yeah, I'm making a different color. So I'm going to install here, right? I'm installing maybe other, other machine, other Windows machine, right? But it's looking for a database. So you can use that database. So how are you going to host the database? Beam Backup database. So when you, so in that time, on the configuration side of the Beam Backup, you have to provide the listener name. So Beam always knows this is the listener. Beam doesn't know how many nodes in the background. So so now, you when you create a listener here, through the always an availability group, database will be copied and synced with all four nodes. That means all four nodes will have the same copy of the database, right? Think about this is your database, right? You just link it here, right? Think about this is database. So it's gonna be have copy here, it's gonna be have copy here, it's gonna have copy here, it's gonna have copy here, right? So, so this is your Beam backup. So whenever your Beam application is always communicating with the listener, right? So if this one, goes down, primary goes down, then what's gonna happen happen? So this one will be primary, right? This one will be primary. And which windows is down, uh, your Beam Backup don't care because Beam Backup only knows the listener. Listener will manage all those things. Whatever is down, listener will move, connect the database with, because, because Beam application is gonna be communicated through the listener and listener knows actually which one is available. So if both are, this one is down, then it, or whole primary side is down, then maybe this one will be your, your um, uh, uh, available like primary side, right? And then this one will be secondary. Still you have two nodes. If this one also down, then, it, then this is the last one. So you have three layer of redundancy plus high availability. So now maybe somebody can ask a question, why you are doing with the four nodes? Your answer is, it's not mandatory. If you want multiple layer of redundancy with high availability, then you can do that. Otherwise, two nodes is enough. Okay, I believe all of you guys understand. So now I'm going to jump into installation because it's gonna, it's gonna be a big video, but um, I'm trying to make it as uh, like shorter actually i'm trying to make it shorter but i'm not sure how much i can do that uh anyway let's start it okay so uh i'm going to i'm, I'm looking my All right, so let's get started. And actually, I lost my I share my screen, but I'm not sure where this screen is running from. All right, here, I got it. This, it was hided. All 
All right, so uh, I have total four nodes. Uh, that means four Windows machine is ready here. And also what I need, I said, I need a, a SQL service account, right? So I want to make sure I have it. This is my V center, okay? So uh, if you look at here, user accounts, um, service accounts, what are the service accounts? SQL service accounts. Under the user accounts, I created SQL service accounts. So what is the service accounts? It's simple. I show you guys several time, right? So it's just a simple account, but the service account means it's a regular account. Actually, it's a regular account the way you create a regular account. Any empty place, right click on it, new, and then user, the same process, whatever you want, just put it this and then say blah, 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 then next, right? So you're gonna provide the password or whatever, right? So this is the way I created. So after I created, I have added some stuff here. If you go to the properties, so this one I created as a SQL admin because I want SQL admin as I wanna work as a service account or you can create a SQL SRV or something, whatever based on your company standard. It's up to you guys. And member of, so it's a member of uh, administrator, domain admin, domain. It not means that you have to have uh, the service accounts have to have all those um, uh, membership. You don't need to actually. So the only thing you have to make sure it has the right to uh, prioritize access to like um, manage the database plus um, like RDP actually, basically RDP, prioritize access. So, Right now I have a domain admins privilege access on this account. That's why I'm able to buy whoever has a domain admin privilege access. By default, it has um, RDP access. So, but there is another group name. If you can add it RDP group. So make sure it's that it's a member of that group. If you work for a big organization, you cannot assign directly those things, whatever I assign here. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. So what do you have to do? Um, maybe you want to create a service account, you, that service account will be member, so you can say uh, RDP or something, whatever, I'm, I'm not sure. So if you find object, okay, not here. Uh, actually, not this one. You will advance and find, and then expand it. You're going to see here, okay, you're going to see, remote desktop user. So it has to be a member of a remote desktop user group, okay? Or also you can make it as a local admin. This is the administrator, right? Administrator, member of, you can add it here, add SQL admin. So that's what you can do, right? So anyway, you have to make sure your service account has privilege access to do the RDP, that's it. How you're gonna manage is up to you. I showed you several way, right? All right, so you, I have a SQL service account. Yeah, I already shows you here, user account. And also I have a user group, SQL admin group. So if I have more users to provide a, um, provide, so you just need to add, uh, if you go to the properties, member of, you see here, administrator and SQL service account. If you add more users, you just need to add the username. Say for example, if I'm not sure, uh, I have account or not, I think I don't have, okay, I don't have it actually. So if you have a users, you can add it like that, but that way you can make a member, a group member. Okay, anyway, so I have now service account, I have uh, my groups, ready and also I have one node ready so okay uh four node is ready so, so all four nodes you need to be installed SQL server and before you install make sure you have different different types if you look if I show you one uh, go to the folder options this one file explorer and then go to this computer you're gonna see here how many so you can have 
uh, including C drive, you can have maybe a total four, five, or six drive, it doesn't matter. And like MDF file, LDF file, um, which is database engine file, right? You can put it here. And also you can put like uh, log file in different folder, uh, temp data in, and temp DV in different folder, a uh, master DV in different folder, and also backup, you can different so not folder, it's a different drive. It's up to you how you're gonna do that, right? So at least you should have to, at least, because don't put anything on C drive, C drive is in G. So at least have two drive, and if you have, if you want, you can do more. So I'm showing you with total four drive. So uh, each and every box has four drive. So how are you gonna get it? Like if you are a system admin, then you can add it from your, uh, you, you guys already know, right? So for, if you have a vCenter from the vCenter, right click on it, just and go to the edit options and then, and then from here, say add new device and then say add hard disk. So you're gonna add hard disk like this. And then it's just adding a more disk on a VM. And from the machine level, you have to go to the server manager and storage, and then disk, and then you have to, if all this will show, whatever the disk you're gonna add it here, it's gonna show as an offline. So you have to right click on it, then you have to make it online, then you initialize, then new volume, then create a new volume. So you have to do all like this. So right now my machine and everything is ready. Um, and also I already installed SQL server on this one, this one, and this one. And before I installed the SQL, I took a snapshot. All, all the time I told you guys that, take a snapshot. So if I go to my, um, see here, each and everyone has a snapshot. If you go here, snapshot, menu snapshot, you're gonna see VM snapshot, and what's that? Before SQL installation. So before, you install the SQL server, take a snapshot. So I did it and I installed a SQL for in, in this box, this box, this box, this box. And this box I don't have installed because I want to show you guys how you can install a SQL server. And <clears throat> make sure, make sure you install SQL server. Make sure you install the SQL server with service account. And I will, that's what I wanna show you right now. So I just installed the um, SQL server management studio. I will show you how you can do that. But ahead of time, I already installed. It's not that hard, just download and install, that's it. So you should have the SQL server management studio in all four boxes. And SQL server management studio is nothing, but it's just a like a vCenter. So from vCenter, you can manage multiple ESXi, same thing. If you have a SQL um, server manager studio, it's not mandatory you have to have a SQL database installed, SQL uh, instance installed, it's not mean that. If you have a, just a management studio, so you can ma you can manage from one box. So you can install SQL management studio on your jump box. And from the jump box, you can connect all of the SQL. If you have a 50 SQL node, like say 50 SQL server, you can add all SQL instance you can access through this. Um, through the SMS, SSMS, which is called SQL Server Management Studio, right? So as a requirement, I install because I don't know when I need it from which machine. That's why to make it everything flexible, I install SQL Server Management Studio in all four boxes. But I'll show you actually how you can do that. How you can do that. I'll show you one in one box. And also I'm going to show you how to install the SQL Server. So now, uh, before you take the, so before you install the SQL Server, you, 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 your job is to make sure you have a snapshot, right? So now I'm gonna show you on uh, four, right? This one, this one. So this one, I already took the snapshot. You see here, it's a before SQL installation. So, I, so I'm ready to, so this machine is ready to go, ready to install the SQL Server. So how are you gonna get the SQL Server? From anywhere you have to, copy and put it on the, any of the, any one of the drive on here. See here, I have four drive. So I put it in this drive. I, this is just downloaded copy of SSMS and this one in my collection. So you can collect it from anywhere, from your organization and from anywhere, okay? Uh, not only that, also you can do one another different way, which is if you have uh, on your data store, any one of the data store, if you have that SQL ISO file, you can go simply select the VM, go to the edit option, and uh, you see here, 
find device. So go to the data store, browse, and uh, maybe I have it. Let's see. Um, I can show you guys here. There is uh, this is the alternative way you can do that. Nest storage, okay. Nest and ISO file. So this is the different way you can do that. The SQL Server, I'm not sure I have it or not. So let me make it a little bit bigger too. Most probably I have Windows Server, okay. Pro. What is this? Windows Server. Windows Server. Okay, I don't have it. If you have it, so you can just select it and then say okay. And that's how. And and then okay, okay. But right now I'm not doing this. But I'm canceling it. Okay. So you can this way, and it's gonna be show on your machine as a. If you go here. It's going to show you as a CD drive here. It's going to it mount it here. So from there, you can install it. But right now, I have already copied here. So I can just start from there. So let's start it, right? So SQL Server, right? Click on it, say mount. This is the ISO file. So mount. And then it's going to open another window, setup file. Look for the setup file. And on the setup file, right click on it, run as administrator, and, and click yes. And within short time, it's going to, it's going to go away within short time. And we don't need this screen. You can close it or you can minimize it. It's up to you. But in the background, something is running. It's going to show you shortly. See, it's running. Don't think, oh, it's not working. Don't click the whole time, like two, three times. Be patient, like wait for it. Because back in the background, it's working. This is the nature of SQL Server, okay? So, All right, so you, you will get it, this kind of Windows window, right? So planning is highlighted. Now you need to go to installation and then new SQL Server standalone installation. You should click here. And also how I got the uh, SSMS, here's the way. Install SQL Server, if, you, if I click here, it's gonna open a uh, download link through Internet Explorer, but I don't like Internet Explorer. So whenever it's open on the Internet Explorer, I just copy that. URL and I paste it, I put it on my Google Chrome and then I'll download. This is the way I can, I download, okay? And I'll show you again. So now we are going to install it, right? So click here and then it's done. See, it's working here, right? So you can close it or you can minimize it, it's up to you. So now it's working and it's gonna give you another window shortly. Okay, so specify free edition, evolution edition, which is, which will give you 180 days or 60 or 60. Um, sorry, uh, six months. And this is a SQL Server um, Enterprise Edition. So, so make sure you have Enterprise Edition, okay? And if you have a product key, so you can just click and you can provide the product product key here. But I don't have it. Click next. And then accept all the time you have to accept it. Click next. And now show details is going to show you it's pass okay. It's passed very quickly because I already turn off every uh, firewall and everything. It's turned off. If you look at here, you know, you can see here server status. Windows just uh, depend on firewall is turn off. Okay. All right. So click next. The previous skin is, is asking me about the update. I didn't do anything. I didn't do the check mark. Don't do that. Because if you do that, it's going to take a long time. So you, you, need, you don't need to actually. So now I need to wait a little bit and then it's going to be go to the install rules. Set of files. And it will give me the feature selection.
An install setup file is now in progress, but it's gonna it gonna take time all the time. So you have to be patient to uh, wait. Um, So now it's opening another window. Just wait for that and the background is working. So I have a complete documentation here. So I'll show you what actually you need to do. Uh, so I'm going to all the way up. Okay, so I will explain what you need Windows, what kind of version you need, SQL Server, what you need. I will explain it, right? Network and uh, always on availability group. So with the diagram, I already described this this part. What do you need? How many uh, drive you need? So I uh, I um, will attach this uh, documentation uh, along with this video, so you can have it. Prepare the SQL node. Okay. So this is what the specification, create a SQL server, service account, install this. So install SQL instance, install SQL management studio for in all four nodes, which is I already did, management studio, and then log in with SQL service account like this. Install SSMS and install SQL standalone on all four nodes because at the demonstration I'm going to show you with four nodes actually you don't need to again 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 you don't need four nodes two nodes is enough but if you want multiple way redundancy in that case you can do that so I'll show you not only how four and if how you can remove one how you can re-edit one. Everything I'll show you on this video. So it's gonna be completed, complete package for all is on. Okay, so for the SQL installation, we got this one, right? So what do you need? Database engine services and also full text services. Nothing else from the instance feature. So one thing you have to remember, one thing you have to remember, the SQL server, instance installation you will have total two things instance feature and share feature so in one windows machine or in one windows box the very first time when you install sql server instance you're going to see both options is in a, uh, like available but the first time when you install share feature share feature can be installed only one time in one box but Instance feature can be installed multiple times. That means if you want multiple instance in one machine, you can do that. You can do that through this one. But share features, you don't need to install again and again, again and again and again. You don't need to. It's going to be installed one time. And by default, everything is goes to C drive. But we don't want it, right? We're going to put it different drive. So in this one, instance root directory, we're going to put it on our E drive. Here, where in our E drive and log file, we're gonna put, put it here. So uh, right now, everything we're gonna put in E drive. Oh, sorry. Um, actually, minimize this one. Okay. So in here, instance root directory, share feature directory, share feature directory x86. Everything we're gonna put it on E drive. I will show you how I can do that. Right. And, and share feature is going to be installed only one time in one box, enter life. Enter life means if you want to install second instance here in the same box, you don't need to install share feature anymore. Okay, client tools, data quality you don't need actually. Client tools connectivity and then find SDK, back compatibility, uh sql client control and or maybe this one you can do okay now so you selected this right this is this 
in here, just change it to E. But share feature, I'm not sure why is. Okay, anyway, 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 well, because I installed it previously, uh, it has some issues. That's why it's not letting me change. But whenever you were to do the first time in machine, you're gonna see here, uh, you have options. This option will be highlighted so you can change it. E -E. You can change it to E, it's not an issue. Oh, the other thing is very important. So the machine, whenever you logged in, you see here, I logged in as a SQL admin with the service account. I log in as a service account. So how I check here, how I, how I log in there, log in, in this machine as um, CMD, CMD. Uh, if you run the CMD command and you say, who am I? Who am I together? Who am I together? Then it's going to show you ELS SQL admin. That means you log in as a SQL SQL admin if you're confused. Okay. That's how you can check it. Anyway, so uh, you should have options here whenever you select this. Instance features here. Um, but what is not showing me here, anyway, it will show you for you. Definitely. Yes. Because I actually did a lot of stuff here before and I just removed this. That's why it's something is already still there. Anyway, so click next. All right, so now, now it says default instance MS SQL server, right? Instance ID MS SQL server, right? So by default, by default, Microsoft provided you instance name, and this is the default name. But if you want, so you can have a named instance. So that means what? You can have your own name here, whatever you want. So naming instance, you can install multiple time in one machine, one in the machine, one in the box. That means what? Say, for example, you said, okay, this is SQL Server database 01, SQL Server database 02, SQL Server database 03. So you can have multiple instance name, name instance like that. 01, let's say 01, 01, oh, what happened? Zero. Oh, maybe it's the name is very big. 01, 02, 03, like this, right? But if you have a plan just only one instant in one machine and also it's Microsoft recommended, highly recommended, and also I highly recommend it, just use one instance in one box. One box means one Windows operating system, one server or one VM. So, and if it is one, you can you can, you can choose uh, 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 default instance. So right now I'm going to install default instance and I got the name by default. And in second time, if I want to install here, I cannot do default instance anymore. And default instance port number is 1433. That's very important. But if you install named instance, then it's not going to be anymore 1433. So for security reason, you're supposed to do with the name instance. But most of the people, most of the system admin, most of the DVA, they all the time do default instance whenever it's a single standalone uh, one instance in one box. And yeah, port number is 1433. But why I'm saying the security reason you should have multiple, but because if you if you have a uh, default instance, everybody knows default instance port number, right? TCP port or UDP port, everybody knows 1433, right? But if you use named instance, then your port number is gonna be changed. Nobody can uh, like think, okay, oh, it's gonna be 1433. Because it's not default, right? It's going to be something else. So that's why I said that's the name instance is secure. Anyway, I'm I'm installing default instance. Click next. And also, whenever you have a default instance, and if you want to browse that database instance, you don't need to put the database instance name. You just need to put it the server name, the machine name. That's it. But if you have a 
named instance in that case, whatever you try to. So from, from SSMS, if you want to access any instance, what do you have to do? You have to first, first you have to type the machine name, then slash, then what? Machine name, then your instance name, okay? So in here, you see, this is the highly recommended. If you want to, if you plan, okay, if you have a plan, So this is highly recommended. Like if you want to do a SQL Server always on, make sure in here you want to use service account. What do you want to use? You want to use service account. So make sure you want to use service account. So how are you going to assign it? Just click browse. And then from here, it says enter directory. Make sure you selected your domain. And then your service account, S U L A D M I N, that's the let bin, right? And check it. So this is my service account, right? And add it and OK. The same way, do here, S Q L admin. S Q L A D M I N. Check it and OK and OK. And these two, you cannot change it because it's gray out, right? But only thing, startup type, you need to change from manual to automatic. This one, disable, we say automatic. That's it. And this one, you will not be able to change it. Full text, okay? And now you need to have a password for that, right? Whatever the password you provide, when you created the Service account, you put the same exit password, right? Okay. So mine is done here and click next. So on the next screen, okay, Windows authentication. So first, add a current user. So which is the current user? I logged in as a service account, right? So whatever the like my login user in this windows box whatever the user i logged in it can be your your account name or something that's going to be show here exactly but that's why i always recommend because use the service account the reason you want to use service account because whenever you install you log in as your administrative account and you are installing sql server with your account what's going to be happen if you quit from your organization from your organization so somebody who is responsible for uh, for managing the active directory they will remove your account so if they remove your account then the sql box you set it up the sql server database you set it up that will be disconnected or it will be a struggle because it's not going to find your username anymore because it's not on the system anymore so that's why all the time is highly, not highly, high, 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 highly recommended that use service account, okay? And then use enable the mix mode. Mix mode means you, like, you can access through the uh, Windows account or you can use access to the SQL account. So whenever you select mix mode, Microsoft SQL Server already created a user account and account name is SA. It's a user account, SA. Say for example, I create my user account save, right? So that means what? Save is my user account. Same thing. Microsoft already created this is in build, created an account. When you select a mix mode, it's created as SA account. As the account, the username is SA. It's not in that SA account, it's the username is SA. Like you are not a doctor, but when you born, you, you dad said, my my dad said, okay, his name is Dr. Saif. Actually, I'm not a doctor. I didn't. I never studied on like medical science, but I am a doctor. It's just a name, right? So SA, SA means it's a username. All right, so and provide a password. Okay. And click. Oh, if you want, you can add more user. 
or maybe group. So we have a group as U L A D M I N G R O U P. You can, you have a different group. You can add different group here. That's it. Okay. So now data dictionary. Data direct sorry yeah, direct uh, directories data directories. Where are you gonna put this the um, files? The root directory is e, e drive. System database is going to E drive. Database um, use. User database directory will go e drive. User database log directory. So log file we want where we make we had a plan right. So log file is f drive, and backup is g drive right. Based on our plan. So okay, minimize it and say f drive, and backup is where. Just change the letter g drive. Nothing else. And also tempdb, if you want, you can move the tempdb to other drive, or if you don't want, it's going to be, go to the, okay, so if you want, so this is the log directory, right, for the temp, right, so you can say, okay, go to the, this log also go, tempdb log also go to the F drive, and that's it, click next. Okay, and install, that's it. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take time, right? So in the meantime, we have already three server ready, right? One, two, three server is ready. And we need to do some other stuff in SoSQL server, okay? So we, we, we did like we install SSMS. We, SSMS is pretty simple. Just download and install it, that's it. And login with SQL service account. Okay, we did take a snapshot. Uh, uh, login with SQL service account, install SQL server default instance. Uh, okay, which we did here. See, I have all the screenshot here. And one more thing after you're done, make sure you have this. So I'm going to open, um, okay. All right, so now what are we gonna do? So you see here, it's install, right? So after it install, SQL is done, and I just want to show you how you're gonna download it, right? So the same way when you open the SQL Server installer, and it's, it's SQL, uh, install SQL Server, management tools. So you just click here, it's gonna open with that. Uh, Internet Explorer, but in Internet Explorer sometimes is creating a lot of problems. So you just click close and then you have to do ask me later. But I don't like to do that. So I, I don't want to download from here. So that's what I do. I just copy the link from here. See, I just click here and on the address bar it's selected and then I copy. And, and maybe I open, I can open uh, Google Chrome. Google Chrome browser. And I can just open any one of them. So it's opening a different window. Uh, let's let's bring it here. So what are you gonna do? Just catch it here. Sorry. So the copy this one, copy, and maybe paste it in some other places. I have okay here. See. So just paste it here. And then hit enter. And then download after download. You can maybe then copy like this the way I have in my each every each and every boxes. So uh I'm going to close this one. So each and every uh, machine I have here, you see it on the database. See I have assessments copied here. So you can just copy to all nodes and, and then just right click on it and then install. That's it. Run the administrator and install it. That's it. It's very simple. So now I have SQL Server instance installed on all four box. So and other three box ahead of time I already installed. I just want to show you what I did. So the same way, the way I installed on four, I did the same way on all other boxes. It's the same. So after you install the SQL, what you can see, if you go to the start button, you're gonna see here. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the DNS here, the box, right? So if you go here, you're gonna see, SQL 2019 and SQL 20 server tools. The tools is like the SSMS, which is here. And 
so before after you install, you have to check this one skill server 2019 configuration manager. So you have to open this one uh, from, from each box. So I have opened this one from this box, this one. Number two, I have opened this, right? And this box, I have opened this here. How you open it? From here. Just here, I'm showing again here, configuration manager. So it's very important to check the configuration manager. I'm going to check here too, right? So configuration manager. This is gonna ask you permission like this. So it's gonna be open. All right, so it's open, right? So when you first time install, make sure everything running on your service account, you see login as a service account. And um, click here, SQL Server Network Connections, make sure and go to the protocols for this one, okay? And you're gonna see name five is disabled. By default is disabled, but you have to enable it. Make sure you enable all four nodes the same way, right? So, Click here, yes, and apply. Okay, and okay. And make sure you register the SSMS. So let me check other node. And other node I already, ahead of time already did. See here, was all enable. And here, if you click here, see, this is enable. And in here, if you look at here, you see it's enable. And TCP IP, the one I explained, uh, if you go to the IP address, you're going to see the machine IP address here, and then the TCP port is 443. And if you go all the way down, dynamic port is nothing, but TCP port is 1433. It's a common uh, default port because we install default instance here. But if you do the naming instance, you're going to see TCP IP dynamic port is something else. Here is a big uh, like number 1578, something, whatever. OK. So we make sure our all services running name pipe is enabled on all four boxes. So everything is pretty ready, but not ready yet. Um, so let, let's let connect. Uh, I just opened SSMS from only on SQL 01. And I, I'm trying to connect all other from here. So how are you gonna connect it? Go more, or maybe you can go change here. Uh, the machine name, just machine name too. You don't need to have an instance name, but if you have a naming instance, in that case, you have to provide this slash and then the instance name. But right now, all of them are default. So default instance, you don't need to mention the instance name, just the machine server name, that's it. Connect, so I have connected. Number two, and then this one, and now is number three, but number three is NY here, right? NY, okay. Okay, I'm able to connect. Then four, right? On NY, which is my remote location. So successfully, I'm able to I'm able to connect all four nodes from through the SQL Management Studio from one box. You can do on any any other box. You can do the same thing, right? Uh, if everything is working fine, firewall networking, everything working fine, you will be able to log in like this. So I log in as a Windows. Uh, so yeah, logged in as a SQL admin, and I logged in this machine as a SQL admin. So that means it's, it's called single sign-on. Single sign-on means one time I logged in with the Windows. Now that was, I I I when I log in here, I didn't provide the uh, username and password, right? It's automatically logged in. That's called a single sign-on. That's called a single sign-on. Okay. So now I logged in here, right? So one thing you have to remember. All four nodes you need to do. Go to the instance and go to the properties and make sure you change SQL servers. Okay. Uh, let me check actually how much what's the capacity for my SQL instance. So it's four CPU and four GB RAM, right? Four CPU and four GB RAM, right? I think all are same. So four GB RAM. Now if you calculate, you'll be, you'll be surprised by default. If you go to the memory, you see here how much memory. It's a huge number, right? I'm, I'm just copying this one and it's a calculated. LCU, okay. Calculator on the calculator. So this is in megabyte, right? So if I, if I convert this one, okay. Two, 
one four seven four eight three six right three six and four seven so that's the megabyte if i convert it to a gigabyte then divided by one zero three sorry one zero two four right so now i'm i'm getting what gigabyte how many gigabyte 20 Yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? 200,000 something gigabyte. It's just memory, just memory. So SQL, Microsoft by default allowed to consume that much gigabyte of memory in one SQL instance. This is the SQL, this is the Microsoft default capacity, memory utilization capacity for SQL. If you convert it as a terabyte, how much terabyte? You can imagine divided by 1024. You see, 2047, actually 48, 2048, 2048 terabyte capacity of memory SQL can consume. It's a capacity of SQL server one in instance. So it can consume that much memory. So whatever that you have the host. So for example, if I can give you an example, say you have an invitation, right? So you can eat 10 plates and your guest, so your host, sorry, your host invited 10 guests. So they arranged 10 plates of food, but one person, you, have the capability to eat 10 plates. So if they, but they don't know, they count you as a general, right? People, so per person, they arrange one plate, but your capacity is to eat 10 plates. So whenever you are the first person they serve, you eat all 10 plates. That means what? Food is gone. So how your host gonna be served to other guests? That means what? If the host knows you eat 10 plates of food, ahead of time, they're gonna inform you, hey, just for today, can you take only just two, two plates? Not more than that? That means what? They're giving you limitation. So that's how, if you eat two plates, at least another eight plates will be available for serve to the other guests, right? So that's kind of limitation you have to provide for SQL because if you don't provide that one, whatever the memory you're gonna assign on your Windows machine, which is in the virtual machine, I show you here. For this virtual machine, we assign four gig of memory, but inside this host, we install what? SQL server, right? And that SQL server capacity is 200,000 gigabyte of memory. So it's gonna be it L, like all four. If you increase it to eight, it's gonna consume all. If you increase it to 32 gigabyte of memory, it's gonna be consume all. So it's not gonna left over anything to the Windows machine. So how Windows gonna be operate? So that's why if you don't change it, and if there is a lot of transaction happen on the database, on the live mode, the machine Performance will be slow. That's the reason. That's the main reason. So what should you do? So whatever the total capacity of your, whatever the total capacity of your virtual machine, just do 60 to 70% assign on the uh, SQL server and rest, at least just 40 to 30% keep for the Windows to be run. So if I assign, three gigabyte here, then what should be? So go to the calculation, calculator, CL, oh, sorry, CL, calculator. 
what happened. Okay, calculator. So 124 megabyte equals to one gigabyte, right? So I said three gigabyte. So times three, how much? So 3072, right? 3072, so we should provide here. 307, 3072. Okay, close it. Three. Oh my God. Three zero seven two. That's it. And also you can change the processor also. So I'm not doing with the processor right now. If you can, if you want, so you can do that. How many processor you have? Based on that, you can maybe assign dedicated two CPU for database and two CPU for Windows, or maybe three CPU for database, three CPU for Windows, uh, one CPU for Windows. That's what you can do. Okay. And one more thing. Permissions, uh, I think here. Yeah. Permissions make sure connect SQL is grant permissions and connect SQL, this one also grant permissions. That's it. We go okay. Okay. So I fixed the first one. Second one, do the same thing. So go to the properties, memory, same thing, 3072, and permissions, make sure this one has check mark and click OK. So right now I'm not explaining because I will explain what you should do. So do all of the SQL instance. Memory, change the memory to what? 3072, and And the permissions make sure it's granted. Number four, same thing. Properties, memory. Listen, this one is very important. Change the memory based on your physical resource, like the one with your BM resource. If your BM has eight, then assign six gigabyte for SQL to at least two gigabyte keep for the Windows. If you have 32, then at least assign 24 gigabyte of memory for SQL and, and 8 gigabyte for Windows. That's how you can play, okay? So 3072, and the permission is this one, right? Okay. So this two is done. Okay, all four is done, right? So now a SQL server is good to go. Now, what do you need to do? Now you need to create a, okay, let's, let's check our documents. Okay, so one more thing I forgot actually. And uh, go to the Active Directory. Active Directory uses some computers and look for the, where is your uh, computer objects? So I have computer objects here. Maybe you don't have, maybe you will not have this. Maybe all four, all four uh, machine is in the same OU. That's nothing, it's not a problem. But make sure the computer object, whatever the computer object you have, I'm just going to the properties and just copy. So make sure on the OU level, go to the OU properties and on the security tab, I have already here, maybe somewhere. SQL admin and okay, see here, all the machines I assign already. So number one, how are we gonna add it? Add like this, you have to add like this, check. But, but right now it's already added. Oh, but uh, make sure you, Select computer object, okay, like this, and then check. You see here, and click OK. It's gonna be add, but I already did. So add all four nodes on this OU, all four nodes on this OU, and also all node four nodes on this OU, right? And make sure, make sure, make sure. What are you gonna do after you add? Make sure you have a check mark here, like this. You see, allow everything is allowed. Everything is allowed. Full control, allow, okay? And also, 
same way add take add add a service account service account means which one sql ad min sql admin and check this one okay and then okay click okay but i have already added here you see sql admin here and make sure it's allowed not only this ou also also this ou do the same thing right click properties you see security you're gonna see here see all four nodes here plus sql admin is here and everybody has a full allow full uh, full control okay that's what you have to do to make sure all right so the ou based permission is done based on the computer object plus permission done with the service account also on the computer ou okay now what next so this is done and now we're going to make a windows fillover cluster configuration so now you, you need to do fill the windows fillover calculator, um, uh, configuration before you do the windows fillover com configuration what do you have to do do you remember you have to take a snapshot so take a snapshot after sql and before fillover cluster okay just i'm just going to copy the whole thing um so go where you need to go you will be center right i'm going to i'm going to jump into my b center right click on it say snapshot take a snapshot and make sure uncheck this one and type here after sql and before windows fillover it's not matter you have to have like that also you can have change here too whatever you want it's up to you but make sure you uncheck this one and click okay so do the same thing with node number two or maybe bm number two it's same thing right snapshot take a snapshot uncheck it and do boom okay and then do it to number three make sure everything is ready uh snapshot take snapshot uncheck it this one okay and this one right click snapshot is going to take only a few seconds not going to take that long okay and okay so you'll be in the safe side if something goes wrong with your in installation you can rebut back that's the uh, easy fix so don't forget to take a snapshot okay so it seems like everything is done and my environment is ready to do the windows clustering so let's start with the windows clustering how are you going to do the windows clustering so for windows clustering what do you have to do you have to install we take the snapshot right you have to install what okay i'm going to actually disconnect all node one by one okay and i'm going to close this window i don't need this one i don't need this one so what i need in each box in each box i have to install a uh, features so where, where you have to go dashboard add roles and features next 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 this is the features so fill over clustering check mark here add feature click next and make sure you check mark here or, and it's a restart is required actually restart is required click yes and install so i just did for my node a1 node number two do the same thing i'm going to close this one and from the server manager add to features click next click next click next and click next again features right over clustering over but this features needs to be installed click next and restart the decision host automatically if required so actually see it's it's a required install so if the reason i'm i'm doing on check mark here because after the instruction is done it's going to be reboot automatically i don't need to click otherwise you have to click and you have to restart it manually okay post number three i don't need this window anymore right now uh and uh add roles dashboard from the uh, dashboard add roles next 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 and feature and from the feature make sure uh you select failover clustering add feature click next and then check mark on register 
automatically and install. So we did so far on the number three, now four, right? So I'm going to close this one and and on what I'm gonna do from the server manager, go to the dashboard, add roles and feature, click next, click next, click next, click next, and fill over clustering, and then add feature, click next, and restart, yes, and install. Okay, so so far I did on all, Nothing is done. If, if it is done, then it's going to be reboot automatically. So, so far, uh, three nodes already rebooted and four number four is restarting right now. So you can check the status from your, uh, if you go to the, actually, I don't need jump machine right now. Just see about the disconnected. Okay. So if you look at here, what's the status of this one? So this one is already powered on, this one is already powered on, okay. How about three? Three is not ready yet, and four is also not ready yet. So we need to wait for this two. You see in the New York data center, uh, different location, it's a remote site. It's, it's, it's going to be powered on, very close. Okay, so this two is ready. So if it is ready, you can start with this. So let's click on, double click on this one, double click on this one. Okay. SQL is zero one, SQL A zero two. And I'm not clicking zero three because I'm not sure it's ready or not. So you can check it from here. It's still working and this one it's also it's not ready yet but it's going to be ready very soon okay hit okay okay it's ready so it doesn't have a refresh and it seems like this one also going to be ready very soon Okay, this one also ready. So we can click, double click on it, double click on it. And, 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 and okay. So SQL 01, SQL 02, 3 and 4. Again, I think we want in this side, okay? So this one is done, this one is done, this one is going to be done, okay? This one just open. And close. So after the restart, still it's going to be installed. Yeah, your okay, it's done, right? Close, successful. Whenever it says installation, succeed, that means done. Okay. So this two is done. And how about this? Not showing me here anyway. Stools. Okay, this one also success, close. This one also success, close. Okay, so it seems like our uh, features is installed. So now we are ready to, okay, these two is still actually running. This one is run, is done. This one is still running. You see here, you see here, this is still running. So it's not ready yet, just wait. Oh, uh, this one is good now. 
I'm not sure what kind of service is here. Yeah, access log, log insert is okay. Okay, so what we need to do? What we need to do right now? So, okay, so we need to do it. Windows clustering. So for Windows clustering, first step we are done. But the first step is install the features. The feature is done. Then now you need to from the any one of the node you can open. What you can open? Failover cluster manager. So I'm just opening from uh first host. You can do any host. It's, it is not matter. You have to have it from this host. Okay, all right. So I have it now. We need to do the validation. So validation you can do from validated configuration, or you can do from here validated configuration. Anywhere. Okay. Click next. Now go to the browse, and one by one. Check. Okay. Add all four nodes here. Copy. And paste it here. Check. Okay, so you can either copy paste or you, or you can just type the machine name. Now the second one I'm going to, because I'm lazy, yeah, so I'm just copying from there. Browse and check. Okay, and then now, now third one, third one is this, right? And so browse, search, because computer object is already exist. You're going to get it. Okay, I got total three now for number four, right? Number four, browse, check, and okay. So I have this list here, that's why I just copied from there, but it's not mean that you have to copy, right? You can type it, if you know the server name, you can type it. So click next. And now it says, please wait while the list of the application test is determined. Okay. Run all tests recommended. Do this one. Click next. And click next. Now it's doing the validation. So you have to wait until it's finished to 100 percent There's no alternative, you have to wait. It's gonna it's gonna done very quickly. It's not gonna take that long, I believe. You see here, it's working. It's gonna be pretty quick. Don't worry about it. almost done so belated network communication most of the time you can see this this error all the time but you see there's no like red alert it's just it just alert you something but it looks good so whenever you have this like this you can just create the cluster now using the validation validated node so just check mark on it and go say 
finish. So when you say finish, then it will give you another, will create a cluster wizard, this one, and click next. And now you have to provide a cluster name. So we already selected the cluster name. What should be our cluster name, right? Uh, I believe we have it here. SQL always on every group, Windows Server, fill our cluster. So this fill our cluster we are creating for SQL Server always on every group, right? That's it's not mean that you have to have it. It's up to you. What you if if you say WSFC01 or something, or maybe XYZ01, doesn't matter. It's up to you. But I always say put something meaningful. Okay, so just paste it here. And now I have two something because I have two location, right? Two one is the Virginia, one is uh Virginia and okay, let's check which one is Virginia. So BA is uh, 10 dot fit is BA and so how many two sixteen is um New York, right? Oh sorry. Sorry, sorry, 172.16.80 is a Virginia and 390 is a New York site, okay? So, two different subjects, right? Uh, where I am, here. So, assign an IP address. So, ahead of time, on the IP space sheet, I already selected what should be my IP address, right? So, for fillable cluster IP, primary site, I have selected a 43 and for Remote site is also 43, but it's a different subnet, right? 10, 15, 90, 43, and this one is 172.16.8.43. So that's what you need to assign here. Just click here. You see everything is written, you just for last one, 43. And here is same thing with 43. That's what I selected. But if you have a different IP address, it doesn't matter. Whatever the available IP you have, just put it there. That's it. Make sure you mark it on your IP spreadsheet or maybe IPM application or server. So click next. Now it's creating, okay. It's creating a cluster and click next. Okay, it's creating. Now it's going to create a computer object. You see here? It's creating a computer object. So within short time, we're gonna see here a computer object. Where? Under BA. Here, if you refresh it, see? Already is created. I didn't create it, it's, it's created automatically. When I run this one. So now it's running. You have to just wait. All right, it's done. So we successfully configured the Windows cluster and finish. Okay, so if you expand it, you'll see the rules, you're gonna see the node, all four nodes is available, right? Up, 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 up. And the rules, so for testing actually, you can create a test role, right click on it, Configure a role, create empty role. Okay, new role. Let's expand it. So now it's running on where? Oh, right. Right click on it. Move, selected node, okay. So right now, my cluster is running on node number four. So node number four is a primary node right now. If you move to one, 
Okay. I'm just manually testing everything is working fine or not. See, now it's move, right? And also, if you say move uh, best possible node, automatically it goes to three. And if you want to move it to, again, more best possible node, it moved to two. So that means it's moving, right? Everything is moving. You see here, now it's owner node is two. If you do move best possible node, it's three. And if you say manually node, okay, now move it to one. And okay, see, and here it's change one, right? It's change one. So it's successfully, we install uh, the failover, we install and configure the failover cluster. And we test it with this new role and it's working fine. So cluster is done. But one thing you have to remember, whenever you create a cluster, it's created a computer object, right? So you have to go to the ID, activate users and computers, go here, see WFC. I'm just going to copy that this name, this name, and then assign under this OU as the properties security. Add this one, FC, okay. It's added here, right? Make sure you have provide the full access. Apply. Okay. In here, properties, security, add. Object, check, okay, and allow, apply, okay. So this was his, okay. Okay, so failover cluster is done. Now, SQL always on availability group configuration. Let's come. So before we do that, SQL always on availability group configuration. So make sure you take another snapshot on all four nodes. Okay. From where you can take a snapshot? Okay, not here. Uh, from this right here. Okay, for number one, take a snapshot. Take a snapshot, and you can say. Before. Before. Okay, I'm going to just copy this one because I need to have. Same thing for all. And here, I'm going to do the same thing. Take a snapshot. This one, uncheck it. OK. And and why? Same thing. Take a snapshot. Uncheck it. Get it here. OK. I do here. Okay, so I'm in a safe site now. So now what do you need? Minimize this failover cluster you don't need anymore. So now let's go to uh, open SQL Server Configuration Manager for all, in all four nodes. Okay, yes. And Configuration Manager, yes. Yes. So one thing I want to show you, say for example, on this clustering you did only with two node. 
And when later on he wants to add one more node, how are you gonna do that? So in here, node here, right? If you want to remove it, is I right click on it, you can say action and E V I C T. If you do that, stop services, and then if it, that means gonna be removed from the cluster. And later on, if you want to add it with the, uh, the uh, this group, then see add node. So this you can add node. Just browse and add node here. That's how you can add. You know, for example, if you don't want, say for example, you started with the two node, and later on you are adding two more extra node, right? So you can add like this. Or if you want, you did four, but your manager said no. Why you did four? You should have two. Then you need to remove it, right? So you can select it, right click on it, just say on a more actions, stop cluster service, and then EBI CT. Then it's going to be removed. So do the same thing, right? This is the one, um, this is the adding and removing for uh, Windows failover cluster, right? And now SQL Allism, right? So for SQL Allism, make sure you open um, SQL Server Configuration Manager for all four nodes. Uh, make sure so uh, all four nodes I have this one open okay okay so what do you have to do Sele select the SQL Server services management studio you see here uh, the, sorry SQL Server Devils engine actually this one MS SQL Server right click on it go to the properties and make sure you click always on ability group and enable always on ability group you have to do that enable apply Okay, okay, and then make sure you restart the services. Restart. Okay, do the same thing for all other services. Select this one, right click on it, go to the properties, and always on, enable this one, apply, and okay, and okay. So do the same thing here. Okay, so before you do that, I like restart this one. And then the third one, do the same thing. Right click on it. And go to the properties. And then availability group, enable it, apply. Okay, okay. And then we start it. Okay. So do the last one. Here's the fourth one, right? Right click properties. And um sorry. Uh all right on availability group, enable it, and then apply, and then okay, and then okay. And then Started. So everything looks good. So far, so good. This is starting okay. Almost done. But one thing, see, everything is connected with service account. Make sure you service account, okay? All right. So everything looks good. So any one of the node you can connect with the SQL Server Management Studio. Studio, or you can maybe start from your jump machine. It, it, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to open uh, SQL Server Management Studio here. On the node number one. It's not mean that you have to do on the node number one. Any node, okay? Any node you can do that. The rules uh, in this cluster wise, the first node is now. If it is for node number four, just move it to node number one. Because we, we just want to start from the one. But if you start from the four, it doesn't matter. It's okay. But anyway, <laughs> maintain the standard. Um, okay. So, Node number one, I'm supposed to get the management studio. Okay, it takes all the time. It takes time. Okay, 
is ver version 19.1, latest version. Okay, come on. So now what I'm gonna show you, I can add all four nodes at a time, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll show you two nodes, then later on I will add two more nodes. And also I'll show you how you can add node, you can remove node, I can add a database with the ability group, how you remove the database with the ability group, everything I'll show you practically. So now it's going to be open. Actually, you know what? Just close this one because I think here is not enough memory. Let's check that task manager. Why it's taking too long? Ooh, you see memory sixty percent. So when SQL service is running, it's consuming a lot of memories. It can go up to. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to uh, open maybe from other machine. Yes, that's why I'm installing all. If if one making issues, then I'm gonna open from other machine. That's fine. That's not an issue. It's, this one is taking like longer than ASO, so I can maybe open from other machine. So what can I do? do okay 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 i don't need actually i don't need this one it's already open so if you think this is like too much slow you can maybe increase the uh, cpu how on the fly i can do that see here that's why i like actually bmr virtualization you see here right click on it go to edit memory okay just add eight and if you look here, it has a memory hot plug is enabled. That's why on the fly I'm able to do that. Okay. You see, it's adding the memory. Now it has a 8 gig of memory. Okay, so come back here. Okay, so now connect number one, right? Sorry. Number one. Okay, connect. It's still slow, okay. Now I'm going to connect number two because I have everything here we've previously connected. Connect, okay. Now I'm going to connect number three. Oh, actually do one thing. I'm not doing with this. The three, let's connect three. Okay, so two, I'm going to remove it. Okay, let's do it two node. I know I have four node cluster, but do it two node. Because I want to show you how you can add a one another extra node, okay? So what do you need to do? So where are we are right now? We enable it, right? We enable it, we enable it, okay. Now you need to create a database. Okay, so one more important thing is whenever you whenever you configure always an ability group, make sure you have a shared drive where all the nodes, whatever other nodes you're going to add it on the as you group, all nodes are supposed to have the access on that share path. So most of the organizations they have SMB share storage, I like Iceland storage or maybe um NAS storage or maybe SAM storage, anywhere if it is it has a SMB storage, you can create a SMB share. But but in this demonstration, I don't have that's why on the Active Directory machine, I have created a folder uh, on the C drive. You see here, uh, go to C drive, I SQL 
DB. Actually, I have a lot of stuff here. The same object. Okay. So I have created a folder. It's a simple folder, right? Right click new, new, and then say well, something like this, right? It's a simple folder, nothing else. And that's what I did. So I SQL always on database, okay? Right click on it and go to the properties. Sharing. So it's like this, right? Advanced sharing. And on that one, permissions. If you look at the permissions, I assign SQL administrator here, but but whenever you do you do that, just do add and here SQL SQL A D M I N. Check it and say click OK. OK, right? This is how it's gonna be here. This is how it's gonna be here, and then make sure it has full control. Check all and then OK. And, and click OK. So now this is the path. So this path you need. This path you need. Okay, so we're gonna use this path later on. I'm going to save it for everybody here. Okay. Man, and also I want to show you actually how we can add a device. Let's do that. Uh ID is one to the one sixty eight one dot few actually. And SQL DV. This is extra things. You, you, don't, if you want, you can do that. I'm just making it ready. I'm just making it ready, nothing else. This extra things. So here is a command. If you run this one, you know, what you can create. I just want to show you. And also you have a shared drive, right? So same, same path you can create, okay. So from your SQL server, any of the server, if you want to add, you see here, um, server object, backup device. If you want to add a backup device, how are you gonna get this? New backup device, right? So you see here, it's, it's redirect to your uh, local device, but how you share device, how you can share it here, share one. So. You just select this backup device. This is extra things. If you don't do that, it's, it's completely okay. It's completely okay. Don't worry about this one, the one I'm doing right now. If you want, you can do that. So I'll share this uh, like the um, uh, command with, uh, with you guys. Okay. So run this one here, copy this one. And you can maybe select all, you can check. Yes, and execute. Yes, it's executed, right? And now if you come here, you just refresh it, you're gonna see it's in here. So you can you can do for all. You can do for this one too, the same way. So backup device, go to the new query and do the same thing. Go here and execute. So if you Refresh is going to be refresh here, right? See, it's going to be added here. So why I request I show you this one because if you have this these things again, 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 you don't need to do. You can have it in the shared drive. You can just do it. Actually, this is not important for now. What I'm doing right now, but I just show you extra. Forget about it. I'm going to close it. Close. No. And close. No, oh, okay. Anyway, so actually, what I'm going to do, I need a shared path, shared drive, and which I created on my Active Directory. But in your organization, maybe you will have one ISO on storage, SMB share, or maybe um, a NAS storage, SMB share, or maybe some other SMB share, or maybe your uh, sense storage or uh, image storage, whatever the storage you have. So in our case, we created on. Active Directory machines here, as uh, you see, on the C drive, we created it and we share it, and we have the share path. We need it, we, we, whatever we want to create, we're going to configure the Allison, and that time maybe we need it. So let's let's get started here. So what, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? 
create a database first. It's a new database. Why I'm doing the new database? Because just for first setup. So you can say test zero one. Later on, you can delete it, no problem. After the creation is done, then if you have uh, actual database, then delete this demo one, okay? So test zero one, I'm not doing anything. It's pretty like common uh, and in, in general uh, configuration. So we click okay. Okay, this created, right? Now I need to take a backup of it. So take backup, task, backup. Okay. So remove it. You can you can take backup here because I, I'm not changing anything. If you want, you can just remove it and add it. So same thing, same, same stuff. You can take it backup here, you can take backup here. It's up to you, okay? So, and also you can maybe you can select from here, backup, you can say, uh, um, what's the, you can, what you can say, a test full dot ba dot back, ba back, back, you have to mention, okay? And then okay, so same thing, same thing is here, which you get it automatically, right? So click okay, and it's a full type, right? It's a full, database backup is full, you can put it all full. And also one more thing I have to mention here. If you have any database and the database recovery model is simple, in that case, you cannot do the horizon configuration for that database. You have to convert it to recovery model, you have to convert it to full. Otherwise, it, it's not gonna be compatible with the horizon environment. That's you have to make sure. Okay, anyway, it's done, right? So our backup is done locally to this uh, first node. Now we're gonna configure all eyes on high availability. Uh, we, I'm gonna create a all eyes on availability group. So right now we don't have any group, right? Right click on it, new availability wizard, okay. Come on. Okay. Okay, it's my mouse is a little bit, okay. Next, so provide a name. So AG, you can say AG01 or something. Always on, ability group, or AO, always on, always on, ability group, AO, AG01. It's, it's up to you, whatever the name you want. Click next. See the test and it says meet prerequisite because I take the full backup. If you don't take the full backup, it says it's not made with the prerequisite. So it's already made, select the uh, database, click next. Now, this is the primary one. Check, um, check mark here, and availability mode will be synchronized, commit, and in here, it's gonna be yes. And add replica. So now, whatever the replica you want, you can add it. So number three, if you want number three, okay, number three. And say, select this one. It's gonna be secondary replica, yes. And if you want more, you can add more. But I want to show you first two, and then I want to add second one. Click next. Now, automatic seeding, full database, and log backup. These options, and also join only, and also skip initial 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 data synchronization. So either one you can go. But right now I'm going to show you with this. And after that, I will show you this, we join. If you have a huge volume of database, if your database has a lot of tables, in that case, you should go with join only. But join only is moreover um, manual systems. I'll show you actually how, how it's work. So now I'm going with this one first, okay? So the share path, specify share path, you guys remember? So you can browse and you can go share path or or what you can do we have already right you remember i just copied here i just i just copied here this one this is the path we need okay so just paste it here the path make sure you have the right path oh what happened what's going on okay anyway i'm going to take it again this path I click on it, go to the properties. 
security, sorry, sharing, and this is the path, right? Copy, come back here and paste here. Okay, now it's working. See, and click next. Okay, so now it's checking everything. Yes, and one warning, listener. So listener will configure it later on. So click next and everything looks good and finish. So you can check here more details. You can see how it's working. All right, it's done. It's done. Close. Okay. So if you now refresh it, this is synchronized, right? And if you refer this one, you're going to say synchronize. So both are synchronized. This database you got automatically. And if you look at on the AG group, you see primary and secondary, right? So zero one is now showing primary and three is a secondary, right? But uh, let me open this one. Failover cluster. Just manually, I'm going to do failover manually. If think about think about something goes wrong with, it's a network, ahem, like for certain time, network is disconnected with the host number one, node number one, so say node number one. So, so right now, right now, based on our configuration, we did with the two node, right? So right now it shows uh, node number one is primary, node number three is secondary, right? So now if I move it to number three manually here, it's just a same network shape, right? So if okay, AG here, right? it's always an average group is running on here, right? So AG, I'm going to change the role to selected node. So I said, okay, so run with three. There is one, right? Two, three, okay. So it goes to three, right? And now it's running on three, right? So if you check on here. This is the proof. So now I'm going to refresh. You see here, still is showing primary is zero one, right? So if you just refresh and just refresh, now check always on availability group. Okay, so see, zero one is secondary. You see here, a secondary, and who is the primary one? Number three is a primary. See here, AG is primary, you see, availability group. Okay, and database is here, test, zero one. So this is the test I did, right? So now the question is, how are you gonna add more nodes? How are you gonna add more nodes? So let's do it. So minimize it, add zero two, connect. Add maybe zero or and connect. Okay, so right now, which one is the primary database? So whatever the primary availability group, you have to go to there. And you can say add replica. Okay, click next. So connect this one first because this one is connected as a secondary. It's SQL admin. Okay, next. And then you're gonna have options to add more replica add. Now we can say connect with number two, connect and add replica. And you can say number four, connect and check mark on it and change it to yes and yes. Okay. So I added two more nodes, right? 
click next. Okay, now database backup. Okay, sorry. Before I do that, I want to show you one join only. I'm going to cancel it. You know what? Because if I do join only with four nodes, it's a lot of manual work. So first complete this one, okay? And now from this one, I'm going to fail back to the number one, okay? Okay, number one is running, okay? So now, okay, in here. Think about your two is not here. Four is not here, okay. So we have only these two node, okay. And now again, node number one is a primary, right? So I'm going to create another database here to test join only. So new database and I name it test 02, okay? And it's a new database. So now what I have to do, I have to take a backup. So it's, it's full backup, okay? I have to take a full backup and plus log backup. So, so how are we going to do that? Task and task and uh, backup. Okay, so remove this one, add, browse, and here you can say test zero two f u l full dot b a k back dot back. Okay, so I'm going to taking the full backup of test zero two. So if you l l, I just put l. It's okay. Hmm. If I type twice L, but it's not taking anyway, it's typo. Um, so click OK. So it's successfully done, right? Now we need to take a log backup. So again, task um, backup. Remove this one and then make sure in here is a transaction log and add this browse in here you say test zero to trm from dot trm trm is transaction log extension okay click okay okay and okay so that's also done right so now what is this node is this is this is the node right so on the from the first node from the first node i have to go to the backup where's the backup files sql uh uh backup okay continue and here's the backup right so which one zero to full and transaction log. So I'm going to copy these two. Now on the number three, I have to go here on three. This is the th node number three, right? Backup, files, Microsoft, okay, 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 continue, paste. Okay, so manually I paste it there, where on the node number three, because I don't have on the node number three, right? And then what I have to do, and then I'm going to close this one. Now I have to, see there's no database right now, right? There's, there's zero one, so zero two is not here, right? So I have to restore it, right? Click on it, then restore database, okay, and 
from where? Device, browse, add. You see here? It shows here. So full, the full one, okay. And I'll click okay. Okay. So this just full one, right? But you have to go to the option. There's a lot of manual effort options then register with no recovery and click OK. OK, so it's registered successfully. OK. OK, now it's just registered here, right? So and now right click on task 02, the one you just restored, right click on here and do the task, go to the restore and then say transaction log. And then from device, browse, where is your file? Here, right? TRM transaction, right? Click OK. And then click OK. And go to the option. And second one. Here's to it, no recovery. Second one. Click OK. And it's done. All right, so I have successfully restored. And just refresh this one. And refresh this one. OK, database, it shows. There it is restoring and in here database is here, right? So now you need to add it on your always an environment, right? So how are you gonna add it under the availability, uh, availability group, right? So availability database. So now you have only one database. How are you gonna add one more? Right click on it, add a database. Click next. You see, test zero two. Test zero one you cannot do that anymore because it's already part of the ability group. But this is not ability group. The zero two is not, but it's a meets the prerequisites. That means you already restored it in the the uh, uh, other node, right? So just check mark on it. Next, connect zero three. Okay, connect. I click next, and now you're gonna choose join only. Click next. Okay, click next and finish and click here you're going to see success close now just refresh this one and refresh this one refresh this one okay database is synchronized if you click here database is synchronized and if you click all eyes on ability group ag see secondary primary database zero two is running so everything is running here now i want to show you guys actually how you can add how you can add another note okay so click here connect with number two and connect with number four Right? And then from the primary one, the one right now, it can be number three can be a primary role. So whatever whatever the node is running as a primary ability group, go there. So in my case is first node is running with the primary ability group, right? So right click on it, you say new ability group, is there, okay, new ability group, click next. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's not new ability group. You can add a AG, right? Replica on the a AG ability group. You're gonna add a replica. So right click on the AG and add replica. Click next, connect, connect. This is the old one. Click next. Now it's gonna give its way to add that next other two node. So. This number two, connect, add replica, then number four, connect, and then make sure your check mark is synchronized, it should be synchronized, and this one should be yes. Okay, and click next. And now, database. So you don't need to do anything, right? So right now, actually, I'm not doing anything i'm just going to skip initialize data synchronization click next i'm just adding the node that's it and finish
And if you look, look at here, Okay, so the other node it shows right now, the secondary one is a cross. Because these two database, okay, this one already able to group number, right? So, Okay, for these two, add, add, add the database. So this is a part of already, so you cannot do that, right? But newly, you added two secondary node, but how are you gonna add? Okay. So actually, let's go to voice. That's not okay. Let's go here. So SQL 02 is newly added, right? The database, there's no database. Okay. So test 01. So where I go? Here. 02. Is it has a, a alert right? So it says join ability group. Okay. Okay. Oh, why? If you have to add it, join to availability group. Okay. So this one is already added to the availability group. Okay, yes. Let's let's show you one thing. So okay, so now how are you gonna actually remove those? So if you want to remove any database, you have to remove it from where? Remove the database from the ability group. You have to do like this. Okay. This one. Remove the database from the ability group. So it's going to be removed from everywhere, right? You see here, it's going to remove from here. It's going to remove from here. So now, if you look at here, your database is regular database, and in here, it's nothing, right? All of them will be removed. Oh, not on the, sorry, on the number 
three. Number three, refresh it. What it shows? Database. So now you like you can delete it, or maybe you can close with this relation. You can you can delete it. Okay. So you delete everything, but you have a database here, right? You have already backup, right? So if you want to do now with four nodes, with four nodes, I or other than ability group in your AG, what do you have? You have four nodes, right? In your AG, you have four nodes, right? If you click here, all of them, you have four nodes, right? It's not showing any more like cross because all the database is synchronous. Like you just remove it from the AG, but now you can re-add it. You can re-add it with that. That's how you, that's how you can initialize. So first do it this only. We have already, I have already uh, backup, right? So from the backup, I can do that. How I can do that? So now I'm going to do that the same way, right? Always on, ability group, AG, okay? Add database, next. Now both are showing, right? So I can add both together or maybe one by one. Click next. Okay, connect, 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 connect. Now I have four nodes, so two, that's why it's too many. Connect, okay. Click next. And join this. I have already added this one. Click next. Okay, next. And finish. See here, most probably it's gonna be done. Yep, almost, yes, it's done. Okay, close. So how are you gonna do the other one? Same way, right? Test zero two, task. Okay, sorry, not here. From the already go. Primary one, whatever the node is primary, just go there and start doing this. Add database, click next. Second one, next, connect, 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 next, do this one, next, next, finish. All right. And close. So now, what do you need to do? Just refresh this one, refresh this one, refresh this one, refresh this one. Okay? So, so far, what I did. Now, if you look at here, the database is syncing with all four. The last two node you added recently, right? See? Is synchronized. This one is synchronized. So all the databases is synchronized. Plus, if you can look at the always on availability group, you're gonna see here. See? Which is primary, which is secondary, everything is showing here, right? All right, so we are successfully configure all as an ability group, but listener is not configured yet, right? So now we're gonna configure listener. So for listener configuration, add a listener, provide listener DNS name, okay? And port number is 1433, network mode, static IP address, and add a IP address, Ato, and add IP address, is Ato. So we have two summary, right? So based on our plan, what should be our IP address? Okay, let's see here. So 44 from both, same, 44. On the 90 subnet is 44, we know, right? So let's, let's start it. 
So what we have to do? See so here, add a listener. So go to the first primary node. This is the primary one, right? If you go to the always on ability group, all the time go to the which one is primary, go there. Ability group, listener. It's not mean that like this is primary and this is zero one. No, it's not. But your number three can be a primary. So it's, if it is number three is a primary, go to the number three node. Okay. So every group listener. So right click on listener, add a listener. We are configuring listener now. So listener DNS name. What should be the listener DNS name? Uh, SQL always on listener LST listener LST means listener zero one. But you have to remember what's your listener name. You have to remember it because you need all the time this one. And port number is one four three three. You have to remember. And network is static IP. So if it's static IP, you have to add a subnet. So under this one, what should be your IP address? 10.15.90.44, right? Make sure you are doing the right one, right IP, okay, 44, okay? 44, right? And click okay. Now add one more with this one, right? So 172.116.80.44. Click OK. Now you have both click OK. So now check it out this one. So we are done with this. Okay, so that means your All right, so it's completed. Refresh it. Now, if you go refresh this, refresh this, and refresh this, okay? So check all, ability group, ability group, AG, ability group, and listener. So each AG should have one listener, right? So if you have a multiple AG, that means multiple listener. Okay, so now it's added. I'm checking each and every one. You see here, listener is added. SQL always on LST01. It's added. Now it's time to check. It's time to check how it's performed, right? All right, so I'm going to download one application. So for example, um, Land Sweep. Lens sweeper, maybe lens sweeper. Just okay. Let me let me download on here. Lens lens sweeper download. Lens sweeper dot com free download. Okay. Free trial. Okay. It's an uh oh. It says login, right? I don't login. He's looking for login. Let's try. I had it before actually. Okay, first name, last name. Oof, there's too much information. Okay, whatever. The country is. Too many information. Too many information actually. So anyway.
download scale of the computer. So it can be in a, like scan your whole environment with downloading, right? Ooh. Okay. Land sweeper setup, okay. Let's say land sweeper is I'm just copy. Let me just copy here. Let's do um uh jump machine. Where is my jump machine? Jump machine is here. Okay. So this is my AD, right? AD download. I'm just stop. Just copy and put it on somewhere here. C drive. That's how easily I can grab it. Okay, so this is small software. So uh jump from jump machine. I'm going to access this one. Actually, uh Let's see, dollar. What happened? Two dot one sixty eight dot one dot two. Oh, this is not typing. What? What's going on? One. One. I two. Dot one sixty eight. Dot one dot two. Slash three dollar. Okay, so I got it. I'm just copying this one and. Let's go over here. So I'm copying to uh, one of the machines. Think about this is my application server. This is the super application server. So here I'm going to install it. Right click, run as administrator. I know it's gonna be a really, really big video, but anyway, it's a complete setup, installation, configuration. It's a complete setup. Is it installed okay? Okay, so advanced install is a SQL server. See here? Click next. Okay, now it says SQL Server required to install in this database, okay? So choose, what it says choose? Type the server name, but what should be the server name? So you don't need to mention about which server is this, right? So you just need to mention uh, SQL Allison, Ability Group name. SQL, SQL A0, which is this one, right? Which is this one? Okay. Uh, jump one.
And this one we have to connect to the SQL authentication. Okay, so SA is a SQL, okay, SA, right? SA and password is Okay, click on that. Okay, it should be in here, I believe I have to put any one of the machine IP address. So maybe because it one, maybe this one. IP address slash maybe this one. New is not create a new let's see what here. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to prove like if I have any application there. So choose a name. Okay. And what should be the Windows authentication? Let's check the Windows authentication. So everything is fine, okay. So, all right, so what do you need to do actually? You don't need to provide any kind of SQL instance, server name, IP address, or things. I have four nodes, I have four nodes. You don't need to provide no information, just listener. What is the listener? This one's the listener, right? But when you add the listener, you have to connect with the SQL authentication. So our SQL authentication SA and password, you know what is the password, right? Okay. Click next. See? Retrieving, checking, is done. Okay. So it's connected with the database. And before I do that, I want to show you one thing. So right now, if you refresh it, how many databases you have? Two databases, right? So after that, we're gonna have maybe more database here. So, okay, and now I'm going to install. This is how we're gonna connect our application. I'm going to install it. I just want to show you guys how it work.
So the application is installing and we can check actually is there any change on the database side? Not yet. Let's see what's going on. If it is fail, it's still because it's an application, so I don't care about the application which one I'm. So I just want to show you if I can have any application connected with the database. It's, if it is fair, it's not mean that all the application will be failed because I'm not focusing on this application that much. I'm just trying to do in, in generic app installation. So running post, okay, it's creating a database, okay. Look like it's working fine. So far, so good. Windows Config IS is Config IS Express. So <clears throat> the application is installing on my job machine but the database I'm using in different machine. So that's what I just want to test. See, the lens sweeper DV is created already. Lens sweeper DV is already created. So it's installing. All right, it shows it's successful install and finish. Uh, it's gonna be open as a local host here. In local host here, you are. Or jump machine, jump, 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 jump machine. We can try with the jam machine. HTTPS, colon, slash, slash. But Oh, sorry, so STT, it should be like that. HTTPS T and colon AD1. Okay, so Lens Sweeper application is installed, look like. <clears throat> so now I just need to have a um, access configuration and other stuff, but it's not my goal. My goal is to just show the application is running like this, right? So um, it's created a database here. So now I want to, uh, I want to make this database on uh on the high availability so how i can add it on the ag ability group okay so right click on here add a database but before i do that i have to take a backup you guys remember so i yes i have to take a full backup first and let's see actually um task if you go to the check 
properties and let's see what's the status of this database. So database recovery model is simple. If it is simple, then it's not gonna work out. Make it full first. Okay, let's try again. If the after I change, still is available. Hit enter. So if I do this one from other machine, let's see if I can get the same interface or not. Yep. So look like the application is running, right? The application is running. Okay. That's good. Uh, now, I want to take a backup. Task. Backup. Then see what the reviewer back. Okay, that's okay. That's fine. It's full mode, right? See, recovery mode is full. Backup is full. Okay. Okay, done. Now I want to make it under the availability group, add a database. Click next. Next. Connect. Connect. And connect. Next. Database, okay. Path is there already. Click next. So it's created almost. Okay, click next. And finish. So let's see. How it goes. All right, done. Close. So now this database is in. Refresh it, synchronize. So now I just need to refresh all. Refresh, 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 and refresh. So one of them, database, is syncing. Right here, database, is syncing. Database, database. A sync synchronized, right? And database synchronized. And okay. So this one's primary, right? Node one is primary. So now manually I'm going to down uh primary primary node. How? So say for example here just stop. Stop the SQL server from primary one. So manually, I'm going to make it down. I'm stopping the SQL service on node one. So it's, it's not one, okay, it's down, right? So if it is down, then, let's see. So go to the jump machine and refer the application. Okay.
So we can also check on uh, here, this one. So which one is taking precedence right now? Just set file, refresh. Okay, so it's here, yes. And why 03 is taking the precedence right now? It's, it's a primary right now. Because is node one is down. So now node number three, I'm going to make number three down. Stop. Yes. The number three is down. So if I look at, if I look at this one, just F5 refresh. So now number two is a primary, right? Primary node. So when number two is a primary node, So when super user is okay, it's not. Okay. From here, So right now number two is a primary, right? Number two is primary right now. Database is here. Number two is a primary.
So based on the high availability shows is connected, if I check here, so number two is now connected because number three and number one is down, right? I manually make it down. So, but the application is only actually sometimes the application has its own um, configuration. So in that case, actually, uh, I don't have to do anything. Maybe if I can do the deep drive inside of this, now it says login field to user, then see what it does. So if I enable this one now, and um, okay. So there are lots of novelty group, it shows here. This is the primary right now. Everything is here. Only one node is down. And this is also running here. So this is the main test, uh, but if application page is not loading, it's different issues from the application side. It's loaded. So it's loaded, right? So that's all. That's how we connect any kind of application to the listener. Thank you. Thanks for watching.